Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, I just wanna give you guys a short tour and do a little documentation on my demo nuclear fuser setup. So it's all on the table in front of me here. The whole thing's hand built with uh, hand tools. Uh, it really is a project that if you're comfortable with high voltage, you can accomplish it in your garage. Now, this video is gonna go over what's here and the second half is gonna show some good video of this thing actually running. So feel free to jump onto that part if that's all you're really interested in. Right out of the gate though, what is a fuser? I'm not gonna go into all the technical details. Essentially it is what could be considered a thermal nuclear device. It is more commonly also referred to as a inertial electrostatic confinement device. And that's a bunch of words. Really what it means is we take atoms uh, to actually do real fusion, uh, atoms of deuterium, which is heavy hydrogen. And we have a high voltage across two grids inside this chamber. The electrons and the, the nucleus of that molecule are split up and the nuclei fly at each other inside this vessel in a vacuum at a very high rate of speed. And when they hit each other, there's a chance that the two hydrogen ions will fuse into a helium ion and you actually perform nuclear fusion in a jar. It's the same thing happening in our sun constantly, just on a much, much smaller scale. So what do we need to do all that? Well, we need a vacuum pump, we need a high voltage source, we need a vacuum vessel. That is about it to make a demo setup. So what I have here is a Edwards vacuum pump. It's actually what started this entire thing. I bought it real cheap off Craigslist. Found out after trying to use it for a little while, it didn't meet the spec sheet and it needed to be rebuilt. So I bought a rebuild kit and was able to rebuild the whole thing in my garage except for one of the innermost bearing seals I couldn't get out. I was worried I was gonna damage the, the housing. So I had a friend named Chris uh, who I work with help me get that out. He had a better bearing pulling setup than what I had. Um, we'll go around the table a little more then and take a look at the rest of the devices. But after that, you have a thermal couple gauge for measuring the vacuum, and here's the analog readout. We got the high voltage power supply, and we have that vacuum vessel. So let's take a look in a little more detail at some of the other aspects of what's on the table here. Here we have a better picture of that vacuum pump, and I'm just gonna pivot to the back side of here to show the output of that pump. We actually have a vacuum uh, valve that's adjustable. It's like a gate valve, so I can have a rough adjustment of the vacuum. And that's pretty much as simple as what that is. You'll also notice this big cardboard thing on the top of it here. I'm gonna pull that off. And what that is, is it's a carbon filter I made. Uh, sometimes when you're pulling a lot of air, you'll get some oil vapor coming out of the pump that smells. So I just made that little box with a carbon soldering filter to try and clean that up. So looking at the vacuum gauge here, we have an analog transducer, which is currently on, uh, but the pump's not running. So we're just measuring about 1000 millitor. And over here, we have a thermal couple gauge made by Varian that's hooked up to it. It kind of comes as one unit, got that used off eBay. That's one of the items I'm looking to upgrade. I have some digital gauging that I also got used on eBay um, but I need to hook that up to either a computer or an Arduino or something to read it out. Uh, so for now, for the last few years, actually, I've just been using the analog gauge. It's significantly easier, no computers necessary, etc. So for the high voltage power supply, I have a safety switch over here. Uh, it switches both poles. I have a variac that I use for controlling the actual voltage. And then here I have a voltage doubler hooked up to a microwave oven transformer with some basic feedback indicators for voltage and current on the front face. It is not the safest power supply in the world by any means, but it's effective. And that's one of the other items that's going to be upgraded. Today, I can only pull about six KV out of that supply. And I'm looking to build something that's gonna get me closer to 12 to 15 KV. All right, so looking at the vacuum vessel here, we have aluminum discs that were hand uh, drilled, threaded, polished a little bit. 
using some high grit sandpaper. We have some neoprene gaskets on the top and bottom that were again just hand cut, a little bit of vacuum grease, and a borosilicate glass. Um, they're technically sight glasses, but it's just a borosilicate glass tube. It's quarter inch thick, so it will withstand the ion beams and the vacuum without much of an implosion risk. Now, if you want to do real fusion in this, you really need to move to more of a metallic uh, stainless steel vacuum vessel, but this is fantastic for a demo fuser. On top here, we have the high voltage feed through, which is a ceramic tube, which is epoxied in place. We have a copper rod going through that tube. The end of that copper rod I threaded, and then that inner grid is actually soldered onto an acorn nut that I can thread onto the end of that copper tube. As far as the vacuum, that's pretty straightforward. I just have a, if I can get into focus here, I have a PVC braided tube for part of it, and then I go to a heavily used stainless steel vacuum tube. Uh, it's got some kinks and probably some leaks, but it's good enough for this. Finally, uh, it's hard to tell here, but there is also a ground strap for the return of the high voltage and it's uh, just copper taped onto the top of the vacuum vessel there. All right, guys, you can probably hear the vacuum pump running in the background now. I'm gonna open the vacuum gauge and we're actually gonna see how quickly this uh, pulls that vacuum meter down. Let's turn the lights on for a sec. This is how impressive this vacuum pump actually is. As soon as we're below about 100 millitor, we can start to get some pretty good plasma. Unfortunately, there's a phenomenon, I'm gonna massacre the name here, Pastion's Curve. And when your vacuum, as it goes down from atmosphere, the voltage required to establish a plasma, it gets smaller and smaller till a point. And my point happens to be somewhere around 20 to 40 millitor uh, the curve bottoms out and rapidly goes uh, to needing a much, much higher voltage to establish a plasma. So very quickly it goes from I can hold a plasma with about one and a half kilovolts that I rapidly need 10 kilovolts in only a matter of 10 or 20 millitor difference. That's one of the reasons I'm looking at upgrading my supply. All right, so I'm going to back off the uh, vacuum valve a little bit here. Some plasma or the, the pressure is going to go up. And I'm going to turn on the safety switch for our high voltage power supply. Now up here we'll see a milliamp current and then below it will be your voltage times a thousand. So let's uh, focus back on our jar and see if we can get plasma established. We're going to turn off the lights for this, or at least some of the lights. And I'm going to start cranking up that high voltage power supply. Ah, perfect. And now because of that bias uh, resistor, we can see we have current, but it's much easier to control um, as a result. All right, we uh, zoomed in and more of the lights are off. We are at way too low of a vacuum, so I'm gonna close this down for a second and let that voltage start to come back up. All right, currently we are at two kV. I'm gonna pull this up to about six kV and see what happens here. Okay, we're gonna back off a little bit. And our vacuum's rapidly going up. I just don't have this pumped down enough right now. I'm going to try and adjust it here to get the vacuum to drop so I can crank up the voltage. That's a mix of uh, one hand on a vacuum valve, another on the voltage, and a third eye watching the milliamp gauge. Uh, for reference, we're at about 15 millitor right now and about 2 to 3 kilovolts. Sorry, make that about 20 and falling slowly. All right, we're at 15 millitor, 
two and a half kV, about two MA. Okay, we're at three kV. Pressure is continuing to drop. Okay, we lost it. And this is that curve I was talking about for very rapidly. Uh, it takes a huge voltage adjustment to maintain it at lower vacuums. We're at about 12 millitor now, and it is getting challenging to uh, control. I'm gonna see if we can get it to a little closer to 10. All right, we're at about 10 millitor, uh, four and a half kV, approaching five kV. I open that vacuum gauge up a little bit. Let's see what we can drive it to. But we are now at the maximum voltage for the supply. That is 6 kV and 10 millitor. And I'm going to open that vacuum gauge all the way up, and we're just going to watch this thing fade out. All right, I unplugged the vacuum pump. We're going to do one more run here at a higher pressure with it being a little quieter. So we're at about 50 millitor right now. The nice thing is you don't need nearly as much voltage or current. So you can see it's getting purpler in color. The reason the color is shifting is not because the white balance is shifting, but because different atoms or molecules are being introduced back into there. Uh, I'll have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure it turns purple in the presence of nitrogen. Um, so right now we're actually pulling two milliamps with just 1.2 kV. We're at 100 millitor. And actually I'm running as low as uh, 800 volts. And it's just gonna continue to have the pressure rise. You can actually see if you look in there, the broken segments in the grid, that's actually from the first time I ran this without a bias resistor and I ended up putting somewhere around a couple hundred watts of power through that grid. And it turned the whole thing red and the silver solder melted and fell off of it. We're now at 200 millitor. From here on out, it's hard to really get anything impressive because you basically just get a really strong ion jet that shoots out towards one of the conductors inside the chamber well thank you guys for watching i didn't want to make this video too detailed or educational i really just wanted to go over what i have here on the table kind of what my setup looks like and take a few cool videos and i think this video accomplished that so let me know in the comments if you guys have any feedback for future videos or what you like or disliked i would love to hear it thanks guys